Hi, Christopher. This is Matthew Robert Payne. Uh, this is a T-shirt that I've got. Be be the change the world needs. Uh, I make T-shirts and uh, sort of show people that one. <laughs> Sorry for the unshaven mess that I am. I haven't uh, shaved in a couple of days and uh, it's showing. Um, I think that's a metaphor for your life. Um, I uh, so many of us are rough around the edges and uh, and uh, a sense that you look at yourself like you're unshaven and unpresentable and um, a sense that um, there may be a sin in your life that's causing you grief and making you feel like uh, people can see you and uh, if people really understood uh, what you like and what you're up to, in your private life, uh, they wouldn't love you and they wouldn't accept you. But uh, Jesus just thinks I'm handsome. Jesus just thinks I'm adorable and I'm beautiful. And even when I've got four or five days growth or weeks of growth, unshaven, unkept, dirty clothes, he, he just loves me. We're, we're dirty sinners, but we've got his robe of righteousness on us. And uh, Jesus... One, uh, wants me to refer you to the parable where the king had a, a party and uh, he um, invited all his friends and, 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 and the people that knew him and they all made excuses and they didn't come so he sent people out to get other guests and he got some but he didn't fill the house he said go and get all the sinners and all the people on the highways and the byways and uh, they went and got all the sinners and they were welcome at the, at the feast but there was a guy there walking around and he didn't have the wedding clothes on. And what used to happen in, in those, uh, in those um, weddings is there was a certain wedding gown that everyone wore, no matter how big they were, they had different sizes. So the rich and the poor, everyone looked the same at the wedding. Everyone was accepted, they were all in the official gown. No one with more money looked better than people who didn't have money. It was just a really beautiful, equalising way of, of uh, making everyone feel right. But there was a guy walking around that didn't have a gown on. Well, that's someone full of pride. And um, it's normally the people full of pride that look down on the other wedding guests because that whole wedding party was full of sinners and, and not friends of the bridegroom, not the Christians. Uh, so. Um, so what started off with unshaven and, and looking bad, uh, my own thing, uh, Jesus is saying that you're loved, that you're covered with the bridal gown, that, that you're beautiful. And uh, what you think is a, a habitual sin or something that's bad in your life uh, isn't a worry to him. His blood was sacrificed for that sin and covers that sin. And while ever you're bringing that before him and he hasn't supplied the grace to get through it, you're covered and uh, he wants you to know that and he wants you to know that you're loved. He, he wants you to know that you're accepted. You're, you're among the beloved. He calls you friend. Uh, so many times you've uh, wept over your sin. So many times you've wept for, for uh, out of compassion and love for other people. You've got such a heart, such a heart for the brokenhearted because you too have had a broken heart. You've got such compassion and love and mercy and kindness and goodness flowing out of you. If, if, uh, if, if, if I won $20 million on the lotto, lotto, lottery and, and, and I sent you $5 million, you'd probably give it all to the poor. You've just got such a beautiful heart. Money is meaningless to you. Possessions is meaningless to you. You only want Jesus. You're running after Jesus. You're hungry for Jesus and his spirit. And he just adores you. He just adores you. Even, even me and my unshaven state is adored. And so are you. Jesus just really wants you to know that he cares about you. He cares, he cares about even your spirit of excellence where everything has to be in the right place and everything has to be in order and you sort of, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, obsessive compulsive 
Uh, you may even have that disorder, but you're obsessive about things being right and in order. He loves all those things about you. Even what people mock, he loves about you. He loves you. Every little facet, the, the, the fact that you're very detailed, the fact that uh, you're very intimate with Jesus, the fact that uh, you just read and watch videos and you're just hungry. And if you had meetings on every night of the week, you'd, you'd be going to the meetings every night of the week. He wants people like you to serve him. He wants people like you in his army. He wants to build an army with ferocious tigers. And you can be ferocious in love. You're not uh, being ferocious with your fists. You've had your days with fists and violence. But uh, uh, the way we do warfare is in love, in, in compassion, in mercy, and, and agape love and healing and signs and wonders. And the Lord is going to raise you up. Uh, you've heard it before and you'll hear it again. You'll hear it again and again. Even uh, so you get weary, it says uh, in one of the books of Paul, don't be weary in doing good. Um, I'm not sure what book, book it's in. It's one of, one of his letters. Uh, in my Bible, it's down the bottom of one page. I think it's Galatians, Galatians 6. Um, so um, don't be weary, even though... You've been promised things for years. You're one of the 11th day workers. You're, you're a person, 11th hour workers. You're one of the workers that's going to be raised up. You've been waiting for many years to be used and you've been promised things and you've heard prophecy after prophecy and you're getting weary because the battle is on. The battle's raging. Things are just about to take off and uh, you, you're weary. You're weary and waiting. You've heard promises. You can't seem to get on top of this sin and everything's the same as my life, brother. It's like I'm talking to myself. It's like this whole prophecy is for myself. And uh, But I won't succumb to the um, desire to switch this off and say I'm not even going to upload that. It sounds like I'm doing a prophecy for myself. It really does sound like I am. But it's for you, brother, because you're loved. You're loved by God. You're loved by Jesus. You're loved by the Holy Spirit. And you're loved by people that you interact with. You may not have a lot of friends. People may not really understand you. You've got fire in your heart. You're a revivalist at heart. You want to be part of Joel's army. You want to go out and smash Satan. And you want to do mighty exploits of righteousness across the world. And you think that you're not worthy because of some fault in yourself and some... Uh, sin that you can't get on top of but uh, Jesus knows you're worthy and you're an overcomer and uh, blessed are those who overcome for I will have them sit down on my throne just as I sat on my father's throne Jesus says that in Revelation and in James it says uh, you're going to receive a crown for overcoming you're going to overcome you're going to make it and uh, even, even if you never did make it, you're still an overcomer. Each day you survive and wear a smile and touch people and help people have compassion and love on people, you've overcome. You're a beautiful person. Jesus really loves you. He really delights in you. Do you know, do you know that Jesus delights in you? He loves your prayers. He, he loves your finances. He loves you giving to him. He loves you singing to him. He loves you praying to him. He loves you being hungrily running after videos and books and sermons. He, he loves everything about you. He loves uh, how detailed you are, how persistent you are, how hungry you are. He loves everything about you. He loves everything about you. So be of good courage. Be of good courage. The Lord Jesus loves you and wants to embrace you and cares for you. God bless.